All right, everybody, uh, welcome to this training for today. A couple of things before we get started. Hello and welcome to uh, folks who are brand new and uh, who I haven't met yet. It's nice to spend some time with you. Um, type into the chat if you're new. I want to make sure that I check in um, and say special hello to all of you. Uh, so my name's Amy McDonald. I'm going to be doing the training. I lost my voice last week. I know a bunch of you, I was, I, I was going to give you a training on social media last week and I had nothing. Um, it's coming back and um, so uh, I apologize in advance if we get a bit raspy by the top of the hour, but this is what I got. I've been pretty much uh, in, what do you call it, Mauna, <laughs> preparing for this call so that I could actually have some voice to share with you all. Um, yay, so good to South Florida. Hey, Sandra, Joe, it's your first, well, there you have it. Uh, nicely lit video out there on your porch, Joe. by the way. Okay, so um, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be talking about how to take good selfies. And um, the, <laughs> I've got to say, those of you who've been in my community for a little while now will know that um, I've got a, you know, an interesting story with having my photo taken. I'm not a fan, I've never been a fan of it. I've I don't know. You know. I don't know if anybody else was like condoing the hell out of their house during lockdown, but I, the first few weeks I did a bit of that and came across my debutante ball photographs. Folks who don't know what that is, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's 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 an antiquated, strange phenomenon that's similar to prom, maybe. Anyway, uh, I was looking at my uh, debutante ball photographs. Terrible. God damn. You should have seen me. So. Um, I never thought I would be doing a training telling people how to take photographs of themselves because it is just not natural to me at all. But here's what we know for sure. Um, if you want to have a successful yoga business in 2020, you need to have a really strong, um, authentic social media presence. And what I found in teaching people, teaching yoga teachers about social media, one of the biggest blocks they have is simply not having enough material to share and what and type it just into the chat if this resonates for you but where people get themselves stuck and where their social media actually you know feels onerous they feel sort of resentful about it they feel like i didn't decide to become a yoga teacher so i could spend all of my time on my phone um, simply because it takes so long because they just don't have enough you know, it's like trying to pull together a good dinner when you've got no ingredients in the fridge, when you've got a, you know, a fridge full of beautiful produce, it's, it's a no brainer. It's a, it's a delight to cook yourself something. The same is true for social media. If you don't have enough to draw from, of course, you're not going to feel inspired. Of course, you're not going to feel like you've got something interesting to share with people. If you're scratching around and sort of feeling um, stifled and, and limited in what it is that you have to share. So, you know, maybe if you've got a huge budget, and you're not in a global pandemic situation, you can go out and have a professional photo shoot every week. But probably uh, you'd prefer to spend your money on something else. And um, I don't know about you, but a, pro a professional photo shoot takes a lot of energy. Uh, for me, it's like a full day to recover after the fact because uh, just of how much energy it actually takes. If, if, if you're remotely uh, on the highly sensitive person spectrum, you, you, it's gonna take it out of you. So what's the solution? selfies and so that's what we're going to be talking about today and uh i'm going to give you the tips that i have been using i i have been um doing a whole lot more selfies on my instagram uh and i want to teach you how to do it so that you can generate lots of material to share on your social media not because you're arrogant or because uh, we say here up yourself uh you know not because you think that you're all that uh, simply because the facts are, and I see this again and again and again with people that I train, yoga teachers that I train in social media, your people like to look at photos of you. You might not like to, but your people do. And I promise you the photos that get more engagement are the ones of you looking like you doing you stuff. Um, if you agree, like, give me a wave if you agree with me on this one. I've had so many teachers say, oh, who am I to? I can't do fancy yoga shapes. I don't look like a whatever 21 year old former dancer. I, I just live at my, you know, my normal house. I, I don't live anywhere fancy. I don't have all the matching stuff. No one wants to look at pictures of me, except that they do, because that's why they've chosen you as their yoga teacher, because they can see something in you that's relatable. 
something that maybe they aspire to, something that gives them comfort, something that they go, you know what, that person, I think I'm going to do my yoga with that person because we have a connection. They want to see pictures of you. They want to see pictures of you looking like you, looking like anything other than who they um, meet when they come to your class. I remember the, the penny dropped for me once when I was <clears throat> in um, Brisbane doing training with my, with my teacher, Noah, at Sri Yoga. And um, like, you know, I don't know, there's like a three hour, is it like half eye of the tiger, Christine? Remember all of that stuff? Like it's like three and a half hours of just like, just going and going. And it's awesome. And it's really hard. And I am already a pitta, 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 hot mess. You put me in three hours of vinyasa. It's like, it's real. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so finally, the Shavasana start to sit up going, like, I'm going to have to eat a banana or kill somebody. And the woman next to me, who we've been practicing with sweating it out for the past, you know, like hot and disgusting and all the rest of it. She says to me, you know, I'm on your mailing list. And I thought, well, shit, there's no point. This like, that's, I'm just blowing my cover. There's no point having fancy photo shoots and getting your hair all done and your eye makeup and all the rest of it, because it's like, you've just been busted. You don't look like that at all. <laughs> you look like this. And so again, this is where selfies get to be actually a really strong way to make connections with people because we all know, that you can filter the hell out of your photos, that you can fill your face with the stuff, you can do all of the things. We all know that that's, a, that that's just a phenomenon of, of living in the world right now. I think what people are hungry for is authenticity and realness. And guess what? That's kind of what mm, arguably the, the kind of the point of yoga is. So <clears throat> selfies get to be a, actually not only a great way to cut the sh bullshit of you and the drama around your social media, but they also get to, I think, be a way of taking a stand and saying, hey, you know what? Yoga teachers also look like this. Hey, you know what? People who do yoga, they also look like this, whatever that might be for you. So hopefully I'm going to teach you some stuff that's going to help you get going. And then I'm going to propose to you that you join my challenge all week. And let's see, we, we did this last time I taught this training. Let's see what you got in your selfie arsenal and let's have a competition. I've got a prize. It's going to be fun. I'll tell you all about it at the end. All right, let's do this thing. I have some, have some slides. It's getting fancy. Uh, where are they? Here. And as I, like, uh, if you have questions um, as, as I go, just type them into the chat and I'll try and keep an eye on it. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is what we're going to cover. I think there's sort of three types of selfies. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the equipment that you need. Uh, lighting, a little bit about editing, <clears throat> and then I'm going to tell you about my challenge that I really want you to join because uh, it's super fun. And I just love seeing you all go out and be wildly successful. Okay, so <clears throat> now this is Amy's what can you fit into 50 minutes breakdown. This is not like portrait photography 101. This is quick and dirty. Let's get it done. There's a global pandemic and I want your social media to be engaging and easy. This is what, <laughs> so it's the cut down version. It's the, it's the beige of the beige mantra of uh, personal branding photography. Uh, so here, I think there are roughly three types of selfies, the headshot, the all body shot. And, and when I say the all body shot, I don't mean like nude. I mean, <laughs> The photograph that you can see your whole body clothed. Hey, if you teach nude yoga, that's on you. How well that goes on Facebook, I'm going to leave that to you and Mark Zuckerberg. But I'm talking about the photograph that shows your whole clothed body. And then also like the selfie of you in the landscape, which sounds a little bit like a um, nature documentary. But, you know, there you have it. That's, they're the words that I came up with. Here, here's what they look like. So this is like the, you know, headshot torso kind of situation. This is what I would call strange foot. Don't know what's going on there, but this is the uh, whole body. And then this is my dog, uh, Stephen. He features quite a bit uh, because he just tends to dog bomb. Um, and then here's us in the landscape. So selfie kind of in landscape. It doesn't have to be nature, whatever, whatever your landscape. So there are three types that um, I think you can do with selfies and what is really important. And this is something that for those of you who have done social media confidence, or I know a bunch of you here 
uh, signed up for it, I'll talk to you more about the importance of varying composition, particularly in Instagram, to get variety. Um, but just for everybody for today, one thing that is very important in Instagram, a good looking Instagram account is that you vary the composition. So it's not always pictures of, of the same type through the feed. You, wanna, uh, you want to alternate the composition. So knowing that there's these three types and when you're going, to, going out for a selfie shoot, looking to get uh, a few shots of each of these types is gonna give you more variety in your feed, which will help <clears throat> increase the appeal, which of course is what we want because that's what's going to encourage people to start following you. Um, all right, there are the three types. Pretty straightforward. When, like I said, just always when you're going out for a shoot, uh, be looking to capture a variety of these. So this, this one here, this is Amy at the toilet block, <laughs> um, where I actually got hit on. Can I just say? Uh, someone asked me on a date. Actually, it was a little more sinister than that. Uh, um, so this, uh, this is a. I have a blue color in my branding profile, so I'm always on the hunt for blue opportunities for selfies. This was the only plain blue wall uh, that, was a, that I was able to go to during lockdown. It happens to be a public toilet. And a rather, uh, uh, it looks like a bee. I'm just going to say it. It looks like a bee. It's one of those public toilets where other things go on. You know, social networking of another variety, I suspect. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm there doing yoga at the front of it. And um, on the opposite side of the, of the street to this, to this bathroom, public bathroom, is um, houses it's residential and uh i was trying to be as quick as i could because it's embarrassing a little when you're out there by yourself in your tight pants uh taking photos of yourself in front of a public restroom um so as you know kind of be quite snappy get all of the different shots <clears throat> these three different types of shots and then a man drives past in his little audi and he asked me he says couldn't you get a friend to help you with that? I said, oh, you know, I'm trying to do this by myself. I'm doing selfies on purpose. And he said, well, why are you doing it in front of a toilet? And I said, well, you know, the blue wall. And he says, well, I've got a blue wall in my house. <laughs> and he's got this sort of strange, dark little Audi and driving down the residential street in the middle of the day uh, in global lockdown, inviting me back to his house. Point is, you do need to pick your locations. Uh, don't get into strangers' cars. Selfies are important. They're not that important. Um, anyway, that was a that was a long-winded way of just saying um, I don't know nothing much. Tell, sharing an anecdote with you about Amy getting us on a date. You know what the things we do for our yoga businesses, folks. Right? I mean, we're committed. All right. So let's talk about the equipment that you need. Nothing fancy at all. In fact, I have a shitty iPhone um, that served me very well, but nonetheless, it's an iPhone six and it's old, and the camera is always being crap but it does a good enough job. Remember, selfies are never gonna replace uh, the quality of a professional photo shoot. It's not the same. This is, about, um, this is about adding to the collection of images that you have, not about replacing professional photography. So they don't have to be super sharp, and I'm not gonna be talking about things like focus, uh, you know, exposure, anything like that. I wanna keep this really simple. This is, I want you to get fast at these so that you've got more to share so whatever phone you have it's going to be better than mine unless you still have like a nokia blue nokia that you can play snake on but if you have a phone that has a camera it's probably going to be better than mine so you're fine now the next thing that i want to talk to you about is let me just show you um <clears throat> quickly um doo -doo, is this tripod now this is a $20 tripod from eBay. We still use eBay in Australia, everybody, because Amazon costs a fortune to post ship. Although there's no Amazon Prime when you live on a giant island in the middle of nowhere. But you can probably get this on, you know, if you, you know, everybody else in the free world, just go to Amazon. Um, so this is the tripod that I have. It's 20 bucks. Um, you need it. <clears throat> And it, like you could have, a, you can have those octopus legs and all the fancy stuff. I like this one because it packs down to nothing to fit in my suitcase or my handbag. Uh, and it can also, you know, um, it, it, you can extend it tall enough so that you could also use it, for example, if you're streaming classes with your phone. So it's good for that. 
it's fairly crappy. I've had to attend to it with super glue on two occasions so far, but for $20, I don't mind. It's been to Thailand with me a few times. Here's the most important thing. It has, it comes with, this is what you need for sure. This is gonna, this is the difference between your selfies being good and your selfies being crap. This is a Bluetooth trigger. Now you can buy these independent of your tripod. And um, I've heard that, um, I've heard that some uh, tr triggers that come with tripods are crappy. This one seems to be good enough for me. It recharges with a little USB cord that it comes with. It just clicks onto the tripod when you're not using it. And then I'll, I'll show you in a second what you do with this, but um, then obviously disconnects from the tripod so that you can use it when you're taking your photos. Maggie's here. I still have an iPhone 6 as well. It's an, I've only ever had one smartphone. Before that, I was a Nokia girl the whole way. Snake, eat your heart out. You know, old school. <laughs> Vintage. So this is what you need. This is the most important piece of equipment that you need. The tripod and the clicker. If you try it, Pod doesn't have a clicker you can buy these on their own you're just looking for like a Bluetooth um, photo trigger yeah that's that all right let me go back to the slides um, so that's that your Bluetooth trigger and then I recommend for ease that you probably also want to get yourself some presets uh, particularly I mean, not so much for Facebook Facebook is a, um, a comfy doesn't have to look so great platform. Uh, but for Instagram, having a cohesive look is important. We're not gonna talk about that a whole lot today, um, but it is important and presets can be a great way to just give your account straight up a really consistent um, appeal so that you're not spending heaps and heaps of time adjusting the photograph yourself. You just load it into your preset press the button and shazam, it's all got the right exposure, the right color balance, all the rest of it. And you don't have to be spending a whole bunch of time doing that because what we're obviously, none of us want to spend more time than we need to at our computer. We're looking to have meaningful engagement with people who are interested in our yoga. We're looking to share the healing gifts of yoga. That's what we're using social media for. So the faster, the more efficient we can be in that process, the better. Um, and so presets is going to help with that. Uh, let me just check the chat. Where do you get your presets, says Heidi. Um, Heidi, there's all sorts of places where you can buy them. I recommend that you just do a search on Instagram um, for presets. Um, don't spend much money at all. Like see if you can get a set for around the $10 mark. I'm sorry, Heidi, I'm not sure which currency you're in, but you know, 10 US. Um, 15 max and uh, you might have to buy a couple of sets um, to to uh, pick one that you really like I know um, I've had some people who've been through the social media confidence course um, with me that have bought some presets that are terrible um, so yeah do a little bit of research don't spend much money and be prepared to maybe buy one that didn't work so well what I would look out for is if you're going to buy presets what you want to make sure is that they come with a good installation guide. Um, Susan, what are presets? Presets are just um, essentially, Susan, what they are is a whole set, a set of, is a set of filters. So you know when you're, say for example, using the app, Instagram native app to upload, a, to post something onto your Instagram, and one of the menu, one of the screens through the uploading process menu is choosing a filter. Presets are, are filters that you buy that, um, they're just a bit more subtle and design focused uh, than, um, the, the, than the filters that you get in Instagram itself. Okay, but, so here we go. Here's, uh, here's what it looks like when you use the uh, Bluetooth trigger when you're still getting the hang of it. Um, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is Amy. Amy looking like a goof. I promised you that uh, I would show you the what to do's and the what not to do's. So here's the thing, you know, when on your phone, when you start taking selfies, this is the system that you want to use. You know, this is how you get this picture. Like how does this photo with the two, with the cute dog butt and Amy 
happen as a selfie. It happens by using the Bluetooth trigger and using the 10 second delay on your phone. So probably you've already tried taking selfies with the 10 second delay, right? So you set the phone up, you check everything, you put 10 second delay, press the thing, and then you dive back to your position and try and get into some form of alignment. And then the phone goes off. For those of you who are old enough and Australian, it's that hey dad moment where it catches you unawares. The good thing is with the clicker, when you press this, it then gives you, if you have the 10 second delay on as well, you then still have 10 seconds to get yourself into position. So for example, obviously this is when Amy was pressing the clicker and hadn't set the 10 second delay. But if we look at this picture, the reason that this is the reason that my dog had an opportunity to jump up in my lap and then the phone went off and took the picture or the reason that we're walking away into the bush um, is because I've clicked the button on the thing and then I've stuck the clicker somewhere where you can't see it into the waistband of my, of my pants just here in my lap. And then we've had another 10 seconds before the photo is actually taken. So it gives you a bit of time to get more into position. And if we go back to uh, say this one here, um, part of Gustasana, like that, again, that uh, act, what you can't see is that this is, I took this photo at the high school where I live and um, the tripod is sitting on a uh, picnic table. This is an undercover area, obviously where the kids would have had lunch. And so I um, go stand there, click the button, chuck the clicker off to the side so it's out of the shot and then get into the position in that 10 seconds. I don't have to run over there. And in fact, the, the, this is cropped in quite a ways. It was quite a bit further out than I actually took the photo. That's how you get this picture that look, doesn't look like a selfie. It looks like someone else, a traditional selfie. It looks like someone else took the picture. Um, okay, there you have it. That's the clicker. <laughs> So let's talk about lighting. Um, the easiest, it's important to consider lighting. Um, let me see. The, the, I really like those pictures of me and Stephen uh, out in the bush because it was afternoon and the, the way that the, I don't know if you can see this one. Let me stop sharing for a second. You can see like this picture, if I can not, the sun is really coming through and falling on us. So the lighting is such that the, it's really lit on my face. So being, being mindful about lighting is, is really important. Similarly, like this one, again, another selfie, the, the sun is really bright here and shining onto my face. So this is not uh, edited at all. It's just using the natural light. So the, the best lighting that you can use, I think, is... Um, again, like this one, it's just outside on a cloudy day, natural light outside on a cloudy day. <clears throat> I've got that singlet, that singlet there gives me that portly kind of BKS Iyengar <laughs> tummy. What's going on there, Amy? Interesting. Tuck that thing in next time. Um, <laughs> it's not a misalignment. It's just my singlet. Um, <laughs> so uh, hang on, let me do the sharing of the screens again. So the outside on a cloudy day, I think is um, the easiest one to go for. Uh, inside is good if you can use natural light. When you start getting into uh, artificial light, it just gets a whole lot more difficult. So again, <clears throat> I'm not, the, but the purpose, my, I guess my son culpa for, for this training for all of you is that <clears throat> you really have fast and easy ways to generate great looking photos that build rapport so that you can share your yoga with people. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for really artfully, um, you know, designed photography here. So yes, you could faff around with lamps and lights and all the rest of it uh, in, your, in your house. Again, I would much prefer you to just sit in front of a window when it's sunny and take that picture. So natural light inside is just a hell of a lot faster. Type into the chat. You might, maybe this is happening for you with your online classes. If you're streaming classes, how much of your life you can waste fucking about with the lighting in your house. I mean, I know when I started um, doing videos at home, like years ago, 
when I started my business, like hours gone, just fucking about with lamps and take this bulb out and put that one over there. And what about if I bounce it off the wall and let's use the, you know, the windscreen protector in my car and try and, oh, Jesus, too hard. Try and use, if you're going to be inside, try and use natural light. And then you might like to try photos outside in full sun. It gives you a different look, but uh, I kind of like it. Let me just see. Um, hey, Deirdre's installed new downlights and it's working a treat. Well, that's a way to go get about it. Um, Kirsty says, yes, time and money spent on lights and lamps. Fairy lights. I've heard this. Maybe I've heard fairy lights from a few people. Um, with the trigger, does it focus better? Not necessarily. Just take a lot would be my um, answer to that one. Uh, I live in Scotland, so I don't... <laughs> Well, Victoria, um, here's what will happen when you live in Scotland. When the sun does come out, everybody will take all of their clothes off and all of that white will reflect the light everywhere and you, it'll be beautiful. It'll be perfectly well lit. Um, Christine's figured it out with no money down. That's my kind of solution. I like it. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, oops, let me do this in a better way here. So here's some examples. Again, this is... Uh, out in nature, this is natural, indirect natural light. So you can see that the light's falling on my face so that it's highlighted, but it's not direct light. It still diffuses a cloudy-ish day. This one, which actually has a costume malfunction, but that's what happens when you've got boobs and you do this angle apparently, and your dog's like, why are you lying down on the floor in your office? But this is natural light. I have a skylight uh, in my office. And so at a certain point in the day, my office looks like that. Great, take the photo. And here's one, again, at the toilets, classy, uh, which is in full sun. So you get these big shadows. And I kind of like those in, in this photo shoot. Um, not, for, not for everybody, but I kind of like those uh, full sun, big shadows kind of, kind of um, it's sort of stark. I, I like that. It's sort of on brand for me. It won't be on brand for everybody. This is probably, for example, this is probably not on brand for Kirsty, right? This is a this might be on brand for Greg. It's sort of it's it's harsh, I guess. Like um, so it's I don't know. It feels to me like it's kind of got more shiver than Shakti energy in it. So it's a design choice that you might or might not like. Um, lighting. So it's, so I think this is one thing that people undervalue. You know, we think about what am I going to wear? What does the background look like? Everybody's got to have their goddamn it indoor yoga house plant. What is with that? Um, you know, get that right. Whatever makeup yada, um, and then forget about things like lighting. At someone, um, I'm not sure if you're here. You sent me some great photos taken on the beach. Um, beautiful, you know, the ocean, nature, fantastic, but just not great. You know, just a slight turn of the camera, slight repositioning would have put the sun right onto her face and it would have changed the photo entirely. So thinking about your lighting is, is important. And, you know, being in, at home in front of a window or at the, earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon is when you're going to get that softer light and it will make all of the difference. Um, any questions, folks? We're halfway, so I just want to. Um, any questions on tripod on order, says Terry? Yes. Um, on anything that I've shared so far? Like, Terry, I hope you just bought a um, cheapo. So it doesn't. Ha I mean, not that we don't mind spending money in this community, right? I'm Jai Abundance. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm down with cash, but but you don't need to. I think a lot of times people um, delay getting started because they think they have to have the perfect stuff. Well, that's a nonsense. Um, you don't. Uh, get going with what you've got. And definitely when I come to talk to you about my challenge, what I'd love you all to enter, um, don't wait for your gear to arrive. You can still take great selfies with just your 10 second delay. If that's what you have, you can still build a tripod out of yoga blocks and get going. Okay, let's move on. Um, Deidre got a tripod at Aldi. Sehr gut. Nice one. All right, so let's talk about cropping because 
um, because most of the selfies that you take, it's unlikely that you're going to use them as you take them. You're probably going to crop them down. So this here, again, this was at the high school, turned out to be a great place to take photos. This is a shipping container. I picked it because it's blue. My brand color is blue. This is a direct sun photo. So it's got lots of dark shadow on my face as just, to, sorry, to bang on a little bit more about lighting. This is what I'm talking about. Direct sun gives you these big shadows. Diffuse lighting doesn't give you the shadows. I like the shadows. I think it looks kind of cool. Anyway, this picture here, I've got no shoes on. It's muddy and disgusting. By the end of taking all of those photos, I had like, I did a uh, tree pose here, got brown footprint on my inner thigh. Thanks very much, like disaster. So obviously to make the photo useful, I had to crop it. I also cropped this one. Now, take a look at this photo, these photos. This is the same day, same day, same body, no, like, same bra, believe it or not. Uh, this one looks quite good. This one's hell in a handbasket, right? Because of how I, well, a couple of things, but the point I'm going to make <laughs> about why this one looks decent, this one looks like crap, is because um, of how I've cropped it. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Greg, slightly different for you, uh, depending on your vibe. I don't know. I haven't had a look at your account. Don't want to make any, actually, let me rephrase. It's not just about Greg, about anybody. Uh, I'm going to make a gendered statement here. This is not a binary gender necessarily environment. So please, if you don't fit snugly into either end of the gender spectrum, this is just take it as it serves. But the, generally, generally, for women, generally, uh, cropping at the narrowest part of your body gives you the appearance of being more slender. Now, I know there is a whole lot of body positivity, la la, all that stuff comes up in this moment, but bear with me for a second. It is more flattering to crop your body at the narrower parts. It's the way the eye works. I'm not making a statement about what is a good looking body and what is not. The point I want to make here is, this is me on the same day, essentially in the same pose, but here I've cropped the photo just above my knee, and here I've cropped the photo just under my pelvis, right? Doing the same thing with my body. I look, this is way more flattering than this picture. So I know for all of us who are like, fuck yes, all bodies in yoga, when it comes to the aesthetic of a photograph, if you're going to crop it, crop it at a narrower part of your body, crop it at your knees rather than your hips. Does that make sense, folks? I'm, I'm, I'm I recognize that this is like um, potentially dangerous ground, but if you're looking for more flattering pose, this is how cropping works. Um, and you can see, right, there is just something about the way that your eye works that makes it, that perceives these images differently. Um, uh, you can tell the difference, sister. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah. Um, I'll take whatever you got to appear flattering, says Heidi. I tell you, you know, folks, I'll tell you what the, the I'll talk a little bit about this pose because this, I want you all to try this one in, in the challenge. Um, about posing for your photos, I got to tell you, the thing that I promise you, you can test it. I want, actually, I'd love you all to test it and let me know. The photo that is going to get you the most um engagement is the photo of you like smiling better laughing this is where it really gets weird and goofy when you're by yourself i mean this is a grown woman at a high school take like laughing at nothing taking photos of herself i mean this is something that definitely gender statement here like if you were a dude doing that at a school i mean you people would call the police so you need to be mindful but photos of, like, this is the one where I got the, um, let me stop sharing. This is the one where I got the brown pants because of the mud. See, that's just me at that same shipping container laughing at nothing. It's kind of stupid when you're doing it, but guess what? People love looking at pictures of you looking happy. It's just me looking like me. People know, oh, she's a bit, like, all of these, there is something about, there's something, in, if you want to, if you want to be, um, if you want to, generate rapport with your people, experiment. It's got to still look legit. Like you don't want to be laughing in all of them. I had a series for a while there. 
it wasn't on purpose. I just must have been really happy. Where there's a lot of pictures of me laughing. Um, and it started to look like, a, I don't know, a bit fake. But um, so don't do it all the time. But some pictures of you smiling and laughing, or well, smiling all the time, but laughing sometimes, it's going to help you with your engagement. Okay, just a little bit more about um, where is an example. A little bit, two more tips about posing. So this pose, the shipping container, well-cropped pose, the reason that this pose works is because there's space between my arm and my body. So if you're posing, not for this, obviously yoga asana, you just do your asana, you nail it, whatever that alignment looks like for you and your practice. But when you're doing like, let's call them glamour shots, whatever, you want to have space between your limbs and your body. And politically incorrect, but perhaps in 20 years we'll go, oh my God, I can't believe we thought that, hopefully, but for right here and now, see that hand, not the hand on my, so this is more, if you're looking for a more, feminine shape again i know these are loaded phrases but bear with me hand on the hip not hand on the like hand on the waist not hand on the hip so my hand should be a little i don't really have a waist actually i've got you know one of those bodies um but which i love uh but you know like going hand on the narrowest part of the waist is good and then the other arm down and along the thigh see how that longer arm suggests length right don't keep the arm in close to the body because that makes your body look wider because I do body plus arm equals body width. So space between the limb and the body. I want you to all practice this one. It feels goofy, but actually it looks quite good. <clears throat> and then you, well, I'll tell you about the challenge, how you can share these with me. But here's another version of it, right? Same sort of thing. One more hack, and this is for uh, this is for everybody. And this also works for like for more of the masculine version. This could be hands in the pockets. This could be hands on uh, hips, not waist hips, um, and or it could be arms crossed. Arms crossed also looks good, particularly for people who are going for more masculine encoded photos. Um, and obviously, you wouldn't cross your legs. So leg crossing like that, again, crop the photo with the narrowest part. If I had my legs together, like samastiti, my legs look wider at the crop point. So if you're looking for more masculine encoded, you're looking for wider at the crop point. You're looking to like, I'm solid, I'm here, I'm taking up space. If you're looking for more feminine encoded photos, you want narrower at the crop point. So one leg in front of the other works well. One more, I'm going on a little bit, I don't want to run out of time, but if this is useful, like positioning, is this useful to, to do you want a couple more tips about positioning? Um, how often do you use animals in the photos? <laughs> if you live with my dog, more than you think. Um, it depends, uh, it depends. Okay, cool, let's do a couple more things on positioning then. So this one here, I'm gonna teach you this hack about um, posing. So what you can't see here, the, when you, you've got to remember, when you take a photo, it um, flattens everything out, right? It, it foreshortens everything. So what you want to do is you can use that to your advantage. <clears throat> uh, hang on, let me see if I've got... This is, a, I'm going to show you a really, like, this is a really obvious example. This one here, right? Selfie obviously, taken at the Bendigo Yoga Festival in the disabled toilet. Awesome. Anything for a white background, I'll take it. So here, the photo, it flattens, the photo flattens you out. What you want to do is emphasize your face by leaning forward. So here, I'm leaning really far forward. And ditto where this one. I'm actually leaning quite far forward here and it makes my head look bigger compared to my hips, right? I.e. it makes my hips look smaller because the photo is foreshortened. So we're going to do, we're going to do this together. <clears throat> Sit well. <laughs> you can stand up if you want, but if, you, uh, if you're in bed, well, good for you. Um, okay, so put your hands on your waist. <laughs> 
so, so funny teaching yoga teachers how to do this. Engage your abs. No, don't engage. <laughs> engage your abs if you want to. All right. So from here, like keep your pelvis where it is, but tilt, tilt forward from the hips, tilt forward slightly, and then extend your, like, uh, extend your chin away from your body, and then tilt your face down slightly. Right. So actually, I'm at like a I don't know, like 10, 15 degree angle from my legs. And I'm going to, so you're not doing that, forward slightly, so no, 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 forward and down. Tilt forward, head forward, chin down slightly. This one, game changer. I want you to experiment. That's what I'm doing right here. My pelvis ain't that narrow, ain't that narrow. I mean, I, I am broader at, I'm lucky in the, for, I'm lucky for inversions that my shoulder girdle is about the same width as my pelvic girdle. But you can't tell from that picture. Look at that. That's V-shaped, baby. So uh, this pose is called, um, this is as flattering as I know how to make it pose. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, uh, and you know, you'll take a bunch and some of them like, you know, let me go back to Bendigo Yoga Festival in the toilet. Um, where is she? Do, do. Here, like this one's really obvious that I'm doing it, right? Because I mean, look how broad my shoulders are. <laughs> but, but you'll get better at it the more you do it. And you can also do it, where is this one of me? Yeah. So same deal, like leaning forward. It's just a, it's just a, if you lean slightly forward, it just makes your, um, the parts of your body that you want people to look at look slightly bigger and the parts of your body that you don't want people to look at look slightly narrower. There. Um, <laughs> do you have a tip for no hips, but a big belly? Well, I think, well, I'm guessing that you have, hips from a yoga perspective because it would be hard to not have them so you have them and they're fabulous um uh it does depend on what you wear like oh this is a bit more I remember, I, we might go over time slightly folks because we've talked a little bit more about this than i had intended so you know you've got to pick clothes that really work for you where's the picture i i don't think i've got it the first professional photo shoot i ever had part of the package included like time with a stylist and she went through my wardrobe by Skype and she's picked out and told me what to buy and what to wear. And so I went and bought this maroon singlet. She said, V necks, Amy, V necks. You've got to, you've got to de-emphasize your boobs. V necks, no scoop neck, no V -neck. Okay, great. V necks. So go buy this singlet, turn up to the photo shoot. I've got this maroon on brand V neck singlet. This singlet, like I have already got like, an abundance of breast tissue. This singlet, oh my God, it was like, I don't even know what had happened, but it was like, it was like the Hanuman, does he have it? It's one of the Ashta cities. Like, it's like I had that city of make your whole body bigger, limited just to my breasts. It was a disaster. I, you, if you look around on my website, you'll see that photo. It's like, Jesus, I don't even know what you're talking about because your boobs are like right out there. You got to pick clothes that work for you. Um, when it comes to bits of your body that you that that aren't your favorite but here's the thing that's most important you've got to remember that whatever your body looks like part of that is why your students are attracted to you they're coming to you because of what you look like in part not all of it but in part they're seeing something in your physical manifestation in your imminent form that resonates with them. So we never want to be not us. We never want to, you know, we don't want to, like I said about meeting that woman next to me on the sticky mat. If, you know, I can't do, there's a reason that my, there's a reason that my pose looks like this because that's all I got. That's as much external rotation as I got in my femurs. That, that's all I do. That's as fancy as it's ever going to get. I'm not going to, um, not do poses or not show up on social because I can't do something or I don't look like someone else. I'm never going to pull up to a handstand. Dylan can have that. I'm okay about it. Like my body just doesn't do that. So, you know, showing up in the body that you have as it is, is part of what people want. That's why they come to your classes. They see your photos and go, well, shit, 
she can do it, maybe I can. Or, well, maybe she's got a bit of a tummy, maybe it's going to be okay if I go to her classes. You know, all these, I don't know, I'm sure, type into the chat if you've had this, but I've had people say to me, Amy, I really want to come to your yoga. I just need to lose some weight first. That stuff breaks my heart. Like, what the hell's happened here? It, just come to yoga. It's not about any of that. So please, you know, and the other thing that breaks my heart is yoga teachers saying, oh, I don't look like an Instagram yogi. I don't want to put my photo on Instagram because I don't look like an Instagram. The reason that we think that's what an Instagram yogi looks like is because they're the only people putting their photos on Instagram. We need to put photos of us on Instagram to balance it out. Um, so, you know, just do you. There's a few tips that are going to, if we go back to the slides, like shit, if you're going to, I'm not saying try and be something other than you, what you are, but what I am saying is like, what, like, I don't know, this nipple is going down there and this is the same day. Like, I'd just prefer to look like that than like that. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's move on. And, uh, oh gosh, running. Okay, quickly. So another thing about cropping, here's Amy at the toilets again. Um, the, you know, take a lot of photos and then when you're cropping, I didn't use this picture on my Instagram. I cropped it and I just used this part, primarily for Instagram because I didn't want all of this green in it. Green isn't one of my brand colors. This photo I used on Facebook, um, but this photo I used on Instagram because of the blue color. So, you know, there's, there's cropping to accentuate parts of your body that you prefer, whatever part. There's cropping to um, enhance the visual, sorry, there's cropping to, there's flattering cropping, I guess is what I'm saying. And then there's like content cropping. And um, you can do all of this on your phone in the moment and then upload it directly to your uh, social media scheduling software all within your phone all at once and it gets to be really fast and really seamless I'm not going to talk about that today that's the thing that we cover in social media confidence but for the sake of the photos all of this cropping can just happen easily on your phone in the actual photo app that you use whatever camera whatever you use and then like I said I do think presets are great this is a goof off picture of me at my house um, this is what it looked like. Obviously, it was a really sunny day outside. Again, Mr. Dog Bomb can't help himself. Um, this is what the photo looked like when I took it. And then this is just a one button preset that did all of the things I needed it to do so that I could use it on my Instagram straight away. Take the photo, press the preset, gone. One of my, uh, my personal, on my Instagram, I have a, uh, um, style choice where every second photo has a white background so this not only can you not see my face but it's not on brand for me but just using the preset straight away ready to go um, so choosing presets that um, choosing presets that match your brand uh, is a really smart way to in to, to essentially fix your photos um, without sliding the things and spending forever and too much time one button preset solved okay so i'm going to talk to you next for a little bit about uh the course that i know some of you have already signed up for and um uh, i think you should all sign up for if you haven't yet um, and then i'm going to talk to you about my challenge so that's all the content that i wanted to share with you for today about <coughs> uh, selfies um hang around so because i want you to join my challenge i'm going to quickly run you through the content of the social media confidence course that uh, starts next week. Um, but for a few minutes, and then I'm going to talk to you about the challenge. And then if we have time, I'll answer any more questions. So keep typing them into the chat. Um, because yeah, I think if I, if I go quick, if I go quick, we'll have um, some time for questions. See you, Laurie. I'm glad you could make it. Um, Cottesmore Health Club says, is presets an app or do I get it in Insta? It's neither. You need an app for it. Um, yeah. Too many tall, thin yogis. Yeah, Heidi, we just need to outnumber them, baby. It's not that there's too many of them. It's just that we're hiding. So come on now. Take your photos. Get them on the internet. Uh, all right. So, and as we go, I've got, these are all selfies. So, um, yeah, these are more, some more selfies. Uh, more graf graffiti walls are great. Um, but also like walls like this, you know, 
Um, this is the at the wall pose. If you go look at my Insta, there is lots of Amy doing this thing, which is kind of a gag. I had a photo shoot in Melbourne in November um, with some of the yoga teachers in my community. It was so much fun. And um, Matt and Renee and Jody and me, uh, we met up in Melbourne and, and I was going for that uh, Frankie magazine kind of situation, hipster kind of situation. <laughs> and now I do it all the time just because it's fun. Anyway, I digress. But one point I will make about this is like that, you can do these because you have the tripod that goes up quite tall. And then I go stand at the wall press the button, get into the pose. That's why you can take a selfie that's so far away. All right, so social media confidence, uh, it's enrolling now. It is essentially uh, awesome. <laughs> Let me tell you quickly about what it includes. It goes for four weeks. Uh, I teach you pretty much everything you need to know about social media in four weeks. And uh, we do a training my at this time uh, on Tuesdays. And then we do a accountability and Q&A call the same week, two days later, so that you are um, implementing as you go. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed with people who buy training from me actually doing it. Uh, um, type into the chat, confess to me now, if you have bought an online training and you haven't done it. Um, yeah, I'll declare it, declare it to me now. Um, I, I'm not available for you to buy training from me and then not do it. So that's why I set this particular program up to be, here's some stuff I'm gonna teach you. And then two days later, let's talk about it. What did you do? Where did you get stuck? What did you, what's the feedback? What questions do you have? How can we make this better? We talk about, uh, I've got a recipe for the five different types of posts and how to do those. So you never sat at your computer thinking, I don't know what to write about this time. Um, I'm gonna teach you about brands and themes and elements so that you have, particularly on Instagram, uh, a cohesive brand identity that's really captivating to attract new people. I'm gonna teach you about video, how to do great live video, how to do it well so it builds engagement on your platforms. We're gonna talk about stories. We're gonna talk about scheduling and how to use scheduling so that you're not doing your social media every day like set and forget, do it once and then it's gonna roll out itself. I'm gonna talk about um, how to use social media for free, not ads, to make good joint venture partnerships and connect with people and be really engaging. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about beyond the basic platforms, where to go next. Is it TikTok or LinkedIn or YouTube? What might be the next platform for you? So it's got lots of content, but it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have a whole lot of pad. Like again, I'm zero interest in just packing stuff out with things that um, aren't useful. Um, Maggie says the social media course is the only on course that I've actually fully completed. I feel like I've done my job for the day then. That makes me feel really good. Yes, yes. Um, see you Sally. Uh, if you've done the course, um, type into the chat if you think people should do it. Um, let, let everybody else know if you think it's a good course or not. Um, I think it's awesome. Do it, says Victoria. Yay. Uh, yes, Heidi, there's some um, you know, nice things that people had to say about it. Um, Dee says it's an amazing course. Dee, I need to check up on your Instagram since we had our conversation to see how you're going blending things. Um, I want to know about that. Definitely do it, says Lou. You guys. Uh, so here's a price, Heidi, for you. Uh, it's 197 Oz. I did those approximations prior to pandemic. So uh, that's an approx um, conversion. Um, do it, Deidre. <laughs> and I'm also just decided, why not, um, that if you sign up today, today only, today only, in the next 24 hours today, uh, when you sign up, you'll also get a 45 minute coaching session with me, which is normally $250. So, you know, that's good. Uh, and you can use that to, um, you can use that, Terry, we've done this, you can use it um, either to talk about your social media with me and fine tune what you learn in the program or anything else, like it's coaching time. Um, so you might wanna look at what does it look like now, merging back into in-person or I wanna launch a retreat for 2021, how do I do it? So um, yeah, you get that bonus coaching time with me 
as well. Um, Kirsty says, that's a great deal. Oh. Um, Linda says, do it. I got heaps of good stuff from the course. Thanks, Linda. Linda, I hope you're coming into the challenge. Um, so that's the course, folks. Registrations close on Sunday. The bonus goes away in 24 hours. It's awesome. Um, it's a ding dong price. So, you know, don't be stingy. Just sign up. We have a hell of a lot of fun too. Uh, I now feel confident in committing to that. People said that a lot. Uh, at the first couple of times I taught it and I thought, oh, I don't, I don't know if I can promise fun. But I think we have a good track record now. I think I can promise fun. <laughs> and definitely lots of support. You know, this, I, I developed this course because, um, because you need, you need great social media. If you want to reach people, if you want to share yoga, if you want to be in service, social media is the way to do it. Obviously, ultimately in person or streaming, but you know, being with people is the way to do it, but you need to get them there in the first place. How do you do that? You do it with social media. And I was just seeing too many middle-aged yoga teachers making social media too hard. It's not hard. It's actually fun. Most people who do this course at the end of it say, you know what, Amy, I actually like Instagram now. Yes, you should. It's a great way to meet people and to talk about what you love. Yoga, uh, it shouldn't take up your life. It shouldn't consume your energy. It shouldn't feel onerous or like an obligation. It should be joyful and fun in a way that you get to meet people and share what you love. So that's the whole purpose of the course. That's what the feedback that I get from people who have done it. And um, yeah, anyway, I'll stop talking about that because I want to talk about the challenge um, and I want you all to enter because it's going to be fun. So I propose that uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm proposing that we do a selfie challenge because like I said, and I'm, I'm obsessed with implementation. There's no point just sitting at home reading light on yoga. Get on your sticky mat and do it. Same here. I propose that. We are going, I'm having a competition for the best yoga selfie. You get until Saturday night to enter. You can enter as many times as you like. You can try any of the poses that we've talked about. I don't care if you're doing a yoga shape or if it's a glamour shot. I'm not really down with boudoir, but you know what? It's up to you. I might, I just might not pick it, but have at it if that's what you're going for. Whatever, any selfie of you, it's got to have, it's got to be a selfie. Like no one else can take it. You can have your pets in it, can have other people in it, but you have to have taken the photo yourself. Here's how you enter. You post your selfie on Instagram. You use this hashtag, yoga selfie challenge and you tag me stupidly what i didn't put on this slide is my instagram handle <laughs> which is at amy yoga biz coach um dana's never been on insta get on it um you need to and then i'm going to celebrate each and every bloody one of them because you're all fabulous and i can't wait to see what you go make and then I'm going to pick the winner and the winner gets a place in the social media confidence program for free. If you've already signed up and you win, I'll just refund you. So still enter, like don't, don't not enter because you've already signed up. I'll just refund you the payment if you're the winner. Um, so that's the challenge. That's my challenge to, I think that's my last slide. Yep. That's my challenge to you all use that. Take a, take, take lots of selfies. Post them on Insta, use that hashtag yoga selfie challenge and tag me at Amy Yoga Beast Coach. You've got until Saturday night. That's my Saturday night. That's UK or Portugal. That's your Saturday morning. And everybody in Canada and the US, that's Friday at some time, depending on where you are. So go get on this. Essentially, you've got five days to um, celebrate your you ness uh, with photos on the interwebs and i'm going to announce the winner on sunday my sunday deidre sunday christine sunday <laughs> uh, and they get a place in social media confidence like i said if you've already signed up i'll just refund you so if you know you need to get in on uh, social media confidence 
great. And definitely if you want to get that free coaching, you need, you've got 24 hours to do that. Um, yeah. And we're going to have some fun with this. All right, everybody, that is, let me stop the share so I can go and uh, say hi to everybody and bye to everybody. That's everything I had to share with you all. Uh, I want to quick takeaways, what you love, what you get. I see you here, Linda. I assume I can come down and actually visit you, I think, um, which will be good. Uh, face plant. Can we go eat something at face plant? Okay. Well, sorry, everybody. Linda and I are just making lunch dates. Um, <laughs> okay, Dee, go teach. I uh, hope I can get a Bluetooth clicker that soon. Maybe Walmart. I've only been to Walmart once and it, I won't tell you it's politically incorrect why I went to Walmart, but it was in Utah and someone from a, someone from a Kundalini yoga studio in St. George took me to Walmart. Actually, we keep one of us to go prairie dress spotting. That's why I went to Walmart. I don't know. It's politically incorrect. We didn't see any, but anyway. Uh, okay, everybody. I want to see those selfies. Don't forget tag me, use the hashtag. I don't want to miss out on seeing your selfies. Um, can I please sign up for this? Yes, of course you can, girl. Well, actually, I don't know. Person? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, excellent fun. Thanks, Steve. Yes. Yes. Welcome back. It's nice to have you back, lovely. So seriously, I can't do you here without coffee. Wow. That's some commitment. No coffee, no prana. I appreciate that a lot. I want to see these photos. Remember, you doing you on social media gives your students and potential students permission to be them. Like this is gets to be empowering. It's not about being perfect. This is about saying, Hey, look how I'm rocking this manifestation of consciousness. Just have fun. Tag me so I can celebrate you. Um, yes, absolutely. Christine, are you kidding? Yes. Yeah. Like Titi Basana. I want to see it. <laughs> yes. I, and you know, the easy, the easiest one for us is like find a, it's the it's the graffiti wall one, right? Like find some interesting background and take a trick on asana and take a photograph. Um, one tip I will say when you're doing selfies at outdoors, this is easy to get lost in the bushes. Uh, I have spent a fair amount of time getting into the position, throwing the, the clicker out of the shot, and then hunting for the clicker. So I would recommend tucking into the waistband of your stretchy pants is a better solution than throwing it into the bushes. Just, just uh, that's a mistake that you don't need to make. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. And um, th thanks for everybody who checked in with me about losing my voice. <laughs> it's very sweet of you all. Looking forward to seeing those photos. I'm welcoming those of you who want to come take social media confidence with me. We're going to have great fun starts on Monday. Have a beautiful wherever you're at in the world. Oh, I love the wave. The wave is so, can we just look at, just makes me happy every time. Bye everyone. <laughs>